Okay, well, let's get started. Welcome everyone to another uh, webinar. This time we're going to be doing an overview of the latest release 1.1. It's a big one with a lot of often requested optimizations, new features, bug fixes, etc. So we're going to walk through that with our new lead front end engineer, hot off the presses, no longer senior. Now he's lead. All right, you like my edits, Nick? <laughs> so it's too late for us to actually uh, get a new slide. So I just uh, I did a little, uh, it, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Love you. Um, as a <laughs> as a reminder, and congrats, congrats by the way, Nick. Um, Thank you. And as a reminder, if you have questions as we go along, we may not cover everything you want to know about with 1.1. So feel free to ask us questions. Uh, as we go along, I'll be monitoring and I'll be asking them of Nick, who's going to do the overview. Um, to submit questions, just join our Slack channel. Here's a bit.ly. You can also go to our website, hardx.com. Actually, you know what? On the next slide. Uh, no, sorry. This is the agenda, and then we'll, then we'll get to that. Um, so we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Got a number of things to talk about this time, and then we'll go right into the overview. We will have Q&A throughout. If you don't mind, Nick, I will uh, just uh, pipe up if there are burning questions, and there may not be, um, sure. and then we'll just do a wrap up. Just real, really quick and simple. Great. All right, so first let's talk about some stuff. So yeah, if you have questions about the 1.1 release, um, as we go along, that come up, please submit them. You can join our Slack uh, community here. Also, you can go to hardx.com and just click the link there or labelstude.io. Uh, and click the link there as well. Um, obviously, Label Studio 1.1 is out. Uh, for more details, you can read the blog directly uh, on our website. Just go to labelstudio.io, navigate to blog, and it's the blog about the release um, for more information. Uh, we also uh, did our first newsletter at the end of June, June 30th. We released it. We'll release another one uh, in about 10 days. So feel free to join our sub stack uh, to get the newsletter. It's basically a very succinct recap of all the happenings for the past month. Um, if you've been in our announcements channel, it's basically that, but made more readable and succinct and collecting everything that's happened um, just once per month delivered to your inbox. So feel free to join our Substack there. Uh, it's just labelstudio.substack.com. And another thing I'd like to talk about for those who don't know, we finally have swag. We have our first run of swag. It is going out to the top 20 most active uh, community members. Um, it, it, and we are going to be personalizing these. This is the first run on the back. It's got some specific, unique, fun and funny stuff that will identify it as the first run of swag. So if you got in on that, congratulations. If you don't know if you got in on that, check the, Slack, uh, check the announcements channel in Slack because we literally wrote out everyone's screen name. So maybe you have... Uh, a little bit of a notification to check out. And anyway, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd look into that. Um, and if you didn't make the cut this time, we are going to be doing these fairly regularly. So if you're an active community member, it's a good chance you'll get some swag. So keep uh, helping each other out and uh, participating in the community and swag, swag will follow. Swag being, in this case, t-shirts. <laughs> but we'll vary it up and we'll do some creative stuff. We're starting, uh, starting pretty simple. Um, but you can be one of the first to get swag from us. So, all right, that's swag. Uh, next webinar we have, we already have scheduled. This will be a special one because it will feature not me, but Michael number one at HardX, our CEO, uh, Michael Maliuk. And uh, I hope I didn't butcher your last name. I just realized I may have, so my apologies if I did. Um, so he will be interviewing uh, a couple of community members, one of whom just produced an awesome um, article on using Bayesian active learning with Label Studio, uh, which is linked to here. You can check that out. Frédéric Blanchot-Cheron. Um, you can read about his titles and, and, and whatnot there, but he will, they will be interviewed by our CEO in two weeks' time. Um, this time, just for once, it will be on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday, just due to scheduling conflicts. So look for that. Um, I, we actually already have a link to register if you're interested. Here's a bit.ly, um, and you can get reminders about that as we get closer to the, uh, the community conversation itself. So, uh, also, if you would like us to highlight your content, if you're writing content that's relevant to the Label Studio community, um, we would love to pump that up and, and shout about it and, and kind of uh, make sure people are aware it's out there. So feel free, but first, we have to be aware. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, DM me on Slack. 
If you've got some content you'd like highlighted, and I will be happy to make sure that gets highlighted. And that is all of the housekeeping we have. Um, now, without further ado, let's go into a, a walkthrough of Label Studio 1.1. Nick, the floor is yours. Okay, cool. So welcome everyone. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we had a release uh, Label Studio 1.1, and it was a pretty huge release. I'm not going to cover everything that was on that release. Um, if you want some details, you can go to our GitHub and read the release notes there. But I will go through uh, like the most the most exciting ones that we had. So um, yeah, let me quickly share my screen. All right, now this is Label Studio 1.1. Uh, in terms of design, not so many changes. Uh, and I want to start with some fixes that we had on that release. Uh, especially we um, had a bunch of requests on image segmentation, um, especially about um, the cases when you have like a, a, a lot of uh, regions on the same image, on the single image. And uh, before it was, to be fair, quite unus un uh, unusable. So we worked hard to improve that experience. And right now you can create up to 700 regions on one image, no problem. Um, uh, I will not showcase that uh, because it will take a lot of time for me to create like 700 regions, but you can uh, test it on your own, um, no problem. So the next, thing that we had, and um, um, it's also about images. Uh, it's uh, a thing about using uh, different tools with the same set of regions. For example, you want to, um, I don't know, uh, you have a, a bird view picture of, um, a, of a city, and you want to um, label buildings and trees. And for buildings, it's uh, more convenient to use rectangles, but for trees, as they have like uh, pretty much random shapes, you want to use brushes. So let's um, create some projects. Uh, I will not stop here with naming, but let's go to the, uh, let's start with semantic segmentation with masks. This is um, actually brushes. We can see, I can draw here <clears throat> some regions. And uh, one thing that we want to do here is to add um, a tool, a brush tool. So we can now set so right here, brush to name, to name image. Um, And we want to set here a name of brush. And you can see we now have two brushes actually. One here that we can draw up like a gray uh, region. We can unselect it next. Um, that's, that's weird. Okay, so we have a, oh my God, what's going on? Okay. It doesn't work, work like that. Okay, so anyways, we can have like labels here, labels. And a bunch of different tools like uh, rectangle, for example. Uh, label painting, yeah. Like that. Now you have two different tools rectangle region and a brush. And both of them can um, can be assigned to um, the same set of labels. For example, I want to create a region here like that. And I select it and assign a car label or airplane label. And then I unselect this, draw something with a brush, and now I can assign a car label to this one. So you can have 
um, ellipses, polygons, key points, brushes, rectangles, all of that stuff that you know, uh, combined on the single image and with the one set of um, labels. And faster. Also. <laughs> to boot. Huh? I'm sorry? And it performs faster to boot. Sorry. Yeah, so sure. Interjected. Uh, all of the region-like things uh, were improved, and you can create a bunch of ellipses, um, a bunch of polygons, uh, rectangles, and all of that stuff. Everything will work much, much better. You can have a bunch of them, like hundreds of them, literally, uh, on a single image, and um, it will work. It will work. So, and the next... Um, Maybe less exciting thing, but uh, more convenient, more for convenience. Uh, you can now hide um, everything here on the list of regions. And uh, also you can hide a particular label. So um, as you can see, here is a toggle that uh, uh, goes between regions and labels. And here you can see the exact same uh, list of regions, but grouped by, by its label. Uh, and you can just simply hide all the car labels or all the airplane labels, just like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Before we now, move on, yeah, just, just a quick reminder for anyone who joined late. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask and we will get them answered um, at, during the course of this webinar. Just join our webinars channel in Slack and ask away. Thanks. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, another frequently requested feature was uh, a yellow format export. So right now we can export yellow. Uh, that's like, you can go to any project um, that you have and uh, press export button. Uh, find the yellow format, and if it matches the config that you have, like all of the export formats depends on the config you have for the labeling, uh, you will be able to export yellow, no problem. Uh, and one, and, and another like highly requested features about image segmentation was um, OCR. So. Right now, you can find optical character recognition right in the templates uh, if you want. And uh, yeah, just press it. You will find this um, like template example and it works uh, really straightforward. You just um, like draw a region. And uh, in the list of regions, you uh, now have ability to type some text. For example, I um, marked these five crosses here. And I just want to say that here we have five crosses. And for example, we have some handwriting. Um, actually, we don't have any handwriting on this image, but we can um, label this medical management thing and mark it as handwriting. And also we can type some uh, medical management here in the text box. And um, if you familiar with the text area and um, text area tag in our code, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's uh, basically, it's a per region um, labeling. And you can now add um, a display mode that named region list that moves this text area that were that was previously displayed here under the image. It will be moved here. And expert format is pretty much the same as uh, for a regular per region. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's that's it about exciting updates that we had, most important ones, I guess. Uh, we also have a bunch of uh, fixes and tuning that you can find on the release notes on our GitHub um, attached to the final release 1.1.
um yeah i guess that that's it for the for this update okay. oh and uh, by the way yeah sure also see. i just wanted to share a, a note about uh public roadmap that you can find um also on our github uh if you go to label studio repository there is uh, a public roadmap file uh, markdown file you can find a link to the roadmap there and uh, follow uh, the development yeah and i will also leave a point, link yeah, uh, that's it. in the webinars channel to the public roadmap uh, after yeah this. cool okay so cool. Can go there and yeah. okay. yeah. awesome uh thanks nick so if there are no questions I think we're actually going to wrap this webinar up short and sweet. Okay. Yeah. A lot of, um, yeah. Um, unless you have anything else to add, Nick. No, no. I'm done. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure there will be questions to follow. Again, if you're watching this after the live stream, ask any question you want in our community Slack, and it gets right to the engineering team, uh, and we try to get back to people rather quickly um so hopefully these updates are to your liking to the community's liking thanks for joining us and thanks again one, Nick, and congrats. one thing i'm sorry uh, yeah. michael for interrupting i really forgot about one really really important thing it's um partial pre annotations that we support right now ah, so basically that yeah so basically that means that you can um upload your pre annotations predictions to the label studio without um, them having labels attached. So you can um, attach them afterwards. As I showed, um, uh, yeah, we don't have that template. Okay, anyways, uh, as I showed here, um, if we add a brush, oh, let's actually add a rectangle. Um, uh, rect to name image yeah um now you can see that the region is uh like grayed out by default it means that it doesn't have a label attached so you can um, upload your presentations to label studio and uh, see those rectangles even uh if you have some labels that doesn't match the list of labels in this config or you don't have, don't have labels at all you will be able to attach them later uh, during the annotation process. And uh, it was a really, really important announcement uh, about 1.1. And now I'm done, yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds great. Let me double check something here. Awesome, all right. Um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna grab the screen from you. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. We will switch over here and show the final slide card. There we go. Again, some links for you here. Thanks, Nick. Congrats on becoming our lead front-end engineer. And thanks, thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a good one.